Right now on the line with us, State Rep. Ron Sandak taking some time out of his day to talk about, well, what went down yesterday in Springfield. Ron, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? We're doing great. How's everything going this morning? Well, it's a better day today than it was yesterday, at least from my perspective. It appears cooler heads may have prevailed here. Yeah, once in a while. Um, it, well, the, it, yesterday's result renews my faith and confidence in the process and that there is sustainable momentum in a new direction for our state. Uh, a win for Governor Rauner, a win for taxpayers, perhaps even more importantly. Uh, we've been following the bill closely. Uh, this is the uh, uh, override attempt on the AFSCME bill, the bill that would have sent the negotiations to arbitration, taking a large portion of power away from the governor uh, in terms of negotiations with, uh, with AFSCME. In your mind, what made this bill so bad? Wow. Um, everything about the bill was was wrong. And in my estimation, it was, and I, I said this on the floor yesterday, it was, to me, it remains the most cynical piece of legislation I have seen in my almost five years in the General Assembly. And that comes, um, you know, when you think about it, there's a lot of bad pieces of legislation and things that have transpired um, over the last four years. But this, to me, was the pinnacle of bad faith legislation because it was done in the middle of negotiations. Look, the executive, the governor of the state of, of Illinois is uh, accountable to taxpayers and voters and is, you know, the is responsible to the people directly. The idea of taking away negotiations with 36 or 38,000 AFSCME employees, state employees, and giving it to an unelected arbitrator is nonsensical. Doing it in the middle of negotiations is unprecedented. Claiming that they were giving up strike, you know, a strike provision, they really weren't, was disingenuous. And the costs, uh, given what's transpired with Blagojevich and Quinn when they were negotiating on AFSCME, and saying, you know, they were terrible negotiators, it was wink and nod type of deals. Mm -hmm. They were, hey, I'll give you this, you guys go hit the street and work for me type of deals. And they helped elect those two gentlemen on a number of occasions. The idea, however, was even more outrageous when it was determined in the legislation it was for three years only. So this was pointed directly at the Iran administration. Because God knows, right, in three years, they could elect another Blagojevich or Quinn, and then they don't want to be constrained by some unelected arbitrator. So everything about the legislation was just wrong. And, you know, and, and to illustrate just how extreme Governor Rauner is, the fact that he, he wouldn't just willingly neuter himself and hand it over to an arbitrator. I mean, how extreme can a guy get, Ron? Yeah, right. I know. I, I love the word use of the word extreme these days. Right. Uh, you know, it's funny. Yeah, and no one mentioned it until I'd been on the floor. You know, the, the Rauner administration um, negotiated, hammered out a tough deal with, the Teamsters, you know, mm -hmm. not a really, not known to be a wilting violet <laughs> of a union group that represented some 4,000 state employees. And he, and he had entered into and negotiated two tolling agreements, basically peace while we continue to negotiate agreements with ASME, extending the deadline so there were no lockouts, no strikes, and every state employee was being paid as, as if the previous contract under which they were working hadn't expired. So the guy has shown good faith throughout, and this idea that they that AFSCME needed to go around him was simply a power play by AFSCME, by Madigan, by the Democrats who are regularly in, in charge of Springfield, and frankly, acting in, contra, in contradiction and in a really adverse way to taxpayers. State Rep. Ron Sandak with us. It's Riley and Scott on WRK. And it seemed yesterday uh, during debate on the measure, Ron, that uh, Democrats supporting the bill didn't even have a great idea of what was in the bill. Uh, one specific question was, what, what happens if only one side declares an impasse? All right, we're going to take it to an arbitrator, but what if only one side says we're done negotiating? Yeah, you know, I, I, if you guys were listening to and or, and or watching the debate, the, the bill sponsor was struggling with the not only just the nuances and the, sp the specifics of his bill, he really didn't have a great general understanding of what it was he was advancing, which led me to believe um, the bill was being, frankly, driven by AFSCME, was written by AFSCME, and was best known by AFSCME and not the sponsor, because I think he went through five bottles of water on the floor um, <laughs> while questioning was going on. And, and frankly, he, he, like I said this in my, on my uh, Twitter account, he drank a lot of water 
but he remarkably said very little. And he had two lawyers whispering in each of his ears throughout the questioning uh, to help prompt and coach him. But yeah, he didn't know. He did yeah, the idea that that this was a balanced, sensible approach. Um, you know, it was is, is outrageous. They could strike. One party could could say there was an impasse. And all of a sudden, we're out in a different system with an arbitrator that no one's elected and is accountable to no one and who generally sides with labor and against taxpayers and doesn't take in the, con the financial condition of Illinois. Um, now, all of a sudden, you know, we're talking about billions of dollars in someone else's hands. And that's just, it's anti-democratic. State Rep. Ron Sandak with us, Riley and Scott on WROK. You mentioned the bill sponsor, uh, State Rep. Mike uh, Smitty who didn't appear to have a great grasp of what was in the bill, yet yet still the Speaker blamed him. The Speaker blamed Mike Smitty for the bill being called for a vote. Mike Madigan, Mike Madigan yesterday actually said, I don't I don't control things around here. I don't, I don't know when <laughs> yeah. things come up for votes. You guys, so, you guys picked that one up. That was <laughs> stunning. So you don't believe that uh, for a second, do you? No. no. Um, I, we giggled. I was with some of my friends... Um, after the vote, we were just kind of um, doing an epilogue and a <laughs> post-mortem of the day's events because obviously you, would, you know, the three of us are talking about SB 1229. It was a long day of override battles, mm -hmm. and, you know, and it, it was contentious throughout, but we were, we were obviously listening in to the speaker's commentary in his post um, uh, uh, a day address, you know, his standing press conference he's doing now. Right. And he said, you know, I, you know, I can't control when my members call bills. And I, you know, we, we had 71 if Duncan would have been there, but I don't control my members. And he threw Mike Smitty right under the bus, <laughs> which I guess is part and parcel of when you, you know, do that kind of stuff to your caucus. You, know, you work for the speaker, you work at the speaker's pleasure, and you take your beating when the speaker <laughs> administers it, right? Um, <laughs> What does this yeah. What does this say, Ron? Overall, about the about Madigan's grip on his own membership? Well, you know, there's two schools of thought on that, right? One is it's loosening, and the other is he's just feigning that he doesn't have right. an iron like grip over them, and there will be some hell to pay internally for this misstep. Remember, guys, for about a week and a half, he has publicly stated he had the votes. In my short tenure in, in the General Assembly, whenever the Speaker said he had the votes, he had the votes. And you ask people around Springfield, he would never really put things on the board when he knowingly was going to lose something. Yesterday may have been an exception. Clearly, Dunk, Representative Duncan wasn't there, and they didn't have any of our help. So we're going to be, maybe they were trying. I don't know if uh, some of my colleagues in central and downstate Illinois on the Republican side, we're being beaten up, you know, on the phone, via text, um, et cetera. And maybe they thought they'd get someone to flip or two. But I suspect um, that he put that vote out there for the sole reason of, you know, making sure people were on the record on that for the 2016 elections coming up. Uh, State Rep. Duncan was, was not there absent. State Rep. Uh, Jack Franks from our area voted present. And uh, State Rep. Scott Drury, who was uh, a, a voice against the Madigan tax hikes uh, last year, was an actual straight-up no vote on this measure yesterday in the House. State Rep. Ron Sandak with us here. It's Rounding and Scott on WYOK. Uh, on the negotiation front now, what the ASME deal is extended through the end of this month. Um, yeah. and, and so the question is, where do we go from here? Now, the unions, ASME said one of the biggest pluses of this bill was labor peace, right? They said, look, we just don't want to be locked out here. And so this bill says Renner can't lock us out and, and there's no strike. So we'll, that, that's that's what's so great about this bill. So can they can they turn turn face and, and threaten a strike now that they had just pushed a bill saying how great it was that they couldn't strike? Well, yeah, really good question. Um, my guess is they're going to have to have, I mean, either they've had a plan B ready or they're scrambling to prepare one. Because as you might imagine, as people with just good common sense could imagine, given that this legislation had been pending for a while, um, there, was real no, there was no real incentive for the union to bargain in good faith over right. the last few weeks, right? Um, the governor vetoed the bill. They knew that was coming. But then they had this reckoning. They thought they were going to override him. And then they could just go about their merry way and negotiate as best they could with him and then declare an impasse strike 
for a while, right? And then the arbitration happens, and you know, they put their best foot forward and cut a deal or achieve a deal that they would not have achieved in the ordinary course of bargaining. That isn't going to happen. So what they're going to have to do now, they're going to have to go to the table and negotiate in good faith. Shocking, right? <laughs> <laughs> to actually prepare and, and, and look at other states, look at what they've been given in the form of wage and benefit increases over the few years that have occurred since um, prior to Rounders' election. They're going to have to look at the state's budget and recognize money isn't infinite and doesn't grow on trees and that their lockstep 10% increases probably don't make sense anymore because we don't print money. They're going to probably have to say, gee, maybe we have to work a 40-hour week like everyone else and not 37 in order to get overtime. And some sensible things. Maybe there's a deal to be cut here, guys. If reality sets in, and I'm hoping it does, they have till September 30th. There is no lockout. Mm -hmm. Until then, there is no strike until then. And so, in my estimation, they've got, you know, three solid plus weeks to hammer out a deal, and if they're people of good, you know, conscience and good faith, they'll work in that, you know, in that direction. And the governor has has promised not to lock out workers, right? Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a that's a standing promise. Through, I mean, he did that since July first, and right. now right. we're in September. I don't <laughs> think that promise is infinite either. I mean, look, uh, he he has offered, you know, a series of of negotiation, you know, points to talk through wages, benefits, work conditions, et cetera. And, and actually, if you go on a couple of public websites, you can see the parties have, have released portions of the economics to the deal on who's yes. where and, and, and how far apart they are. So some of this stuff isn't even all that super secret. So it seems to me, um, get to work, right? You have, the, the union has these negotiators that are trained professionals that are at the bargaining table the, rep, the, the governor has his representatives and, and, and knock it out but eventually you know that there's going to be a reckoning of one you know one way or another it, after September 30th if workers don't want to come to work that's their right there's no contract and if the governor and his staff says these guys aren't negotiating in good faith and I, you know I don't see this going anywhere he could lock them out or he could go a different direction. Thus far, though, uh, you know, as, as you pointed out earlier, he has negotiated in good faith even after the, the teacher's agreement. You had a bunch of people coming out saying, you know, he, he followed through on what he said he would do. In every endeavor, the objective record, not the political record, not the talking points, not the spin zone. The objective record has been two tolling agreements keeping the peace, the labor peace, as Speaker Madigan likes to say now. Mm -hmm. There has been labor peace. There have been discussions, and there have been offers, and there's been a deal this governor cut with the Teamsters. That's the objective record. And it's pretty fair that, I mean, look, does he want to do things that they have in the past? No. Do, does he expect state employees and everyone to take some, you know, responsibility and assume some sacrifice? in some capacity? The answer is yes. Taxpayers are doing it, for God's sake. Right? <laughs> um, they are. We are. We all know that. So it, it, so there is a difference of strategy and tactic, to be sure. Um, but this governor has said he wants to negotiate in good faith, and now we'll see if our friends on the other side of the table, the ASME union representatives, will come to the table with some sense of reality now hopefully pervading them. And a deal can be achieved if they want to work in good faith. Always enjoy some time spent with State Rep. Ron Sandak. Ron, thanks a lot for your time. Have a terrific weekend. Thank you, guys. It's a pleasure.